So we're here at Huron in Las Vegas, 2010, and uh, I have with me uh, Josh Corman, and I had the pleasure of uh, watching him talk. I actually thought it was one of the most provocative uh, discussions about PCI I I've seen. In fact, uh, I would make the prediction that if there's like a uh, Tea Party movement oh, no. uh, taking down PCI, you'll be at the head of it. So, uh, <laughs> so by the way, I just love to talk. Uh, uh, you know, could you, t can you tell me about the story of like how the talk came to be and uh, why you care so much about it? Uh, so. Right now, compliance is the number one driver of security spending, yeah. and right up tip top is PCI. I think there were several compliance regimes before, but nothing had the specificity and the teeth that PCI has had. And I don't think compliance in and of itself is a good thing or a bad thing, but I, I actually care more about the unintended consequences of this uh, new player in the ecosystem than you know, it's, with its original intent, its original scope. Um, it should be well contained. What's happened is people have conflated it with an industry best practice. It's become the measuring stick for what gets budgeted and what doesn't, and it's fundamentally altering the investment strategies and the risk management of in places it never was intended. And I love that word you, uh, you used, PCI is a contagion. Say more <laughs> about that. I mean, that was, it's a very, uh, it, it's so true, right? it's about scoping, but uh, contagion has a very interesting connotation. Well, we've had a series of very adult and rational debates with QSAs, with uh, affected merchants, with service providers who kind of get infected by the merchants. So one example is one of the QSAs uh, that we involved in the debates. She does audits of service providers. And these people don't want the credit card data. They're infected with it by virtue of doing business with a merchant. And then all of a sudden they're in scope and they have all these uh, things to do that are very costly. They don't. They already have very important margins. And, they find the, uh, the controls and requirements ill-fitting for their business model. Uh, so it's, that's an example of how it's spread um, organically. Uh, but others are that certain state laws are just being lazy and cutting and pasting PCI and saying this is a privacy law. Um, but more tro troubling is in a bad economy with too much cost complexity already in security. People have, have conflated a set of checklists for card data into this is best practices for securing all my intellectual property and that's never the intent nor is it effective. And you uh, use some very provocative words like uh, the PCI compliance problem is an existential crisis for organizations. How do you substantiate that? Which, yeah, by the way, you know I agree with, right? Uh, uh, but it's, uh, it, tell me more about existential crisis. I'm trying to think where that was said. Uh, I mean, we certainly said it was an existential. We, we did this at Shmoocon, for example, as a debate. Uh, and we said it was an existential threat to the Shmoo way of life. Uh, because we've been trying to really grapple with evolutions in the threat landscape, evolutions in technology, evolutions in business models, evolutions in economics, and it's a tough thing. And we're, we're still not to a science level, but as we've been trying to do this, innovative people are trying to come up with innovative solutions, and what we're seeing is economically, and this is a longer conversation, I've been writing a paper on it, uh, the economics have been altered such that we're actually, since we're requiring and finding if you don't buy these fairly old technologies, we're punishing innovative technologies. Now, you could argue that we shouldn't have 70 markets to begin with, and I would agree. We have a lot of dead wood, and the signal to noise ratio is very poor. Um, but we're actually rewarding a very narrow set of controls that are specified and required, or I'll be fine, and we're punishing other relevant technologies that aren't yet identified. Lots of noise. Yeah, exactly. We'll pause for a second. So, Josh, I'm uh, looking forward to the discussion uh, about my conjecture, right, that you know, one of the problems is that we're talking about control activities and controls as opposed to control objectives, right, uh, which is a very dangerous line. We start just having such a prescriptive, you know, those controls. Can you react to that? Yeah, I think many of the critics of PCI think it's... Uh, it's too much focus on means and not on ends. Right, exactly. Uh, and when you get specific, it's finable, but it's also very brittle. And that was one of the points, is the specificity dilemma. Yeah. For this to be more uh, open to innovation or creativity or flexibility over time, with like changes like exit distribution, et cetera, you need to be focused on the ends. Uh, but it is, you said, what, well, very strange standard. It does talk about control, not the objectives, right? Uh, why it hasn't changed. Anything. You know, I want to make a point about this. Um, in, in our debates, uh, one of the participants Guys, said, well, you know, some people complain this. It's, it's, it tastes great, less filling debate, right? Yeah. And I said it's a taste awful, more filling debate because, <laughs> but what he's saying is uh, some people complain it's too specific and some people complain it's not specific enough. Therefore, they're both whiners and I'm not going to listen. And I heard that very, very differently. I heard they're both right, not that they're both wrong. 
and, and it is a complex issue, and there's lots of moving pieces, and therefore, you know, maybe we need to be focused on measuring results and outcomes instead of um, a hypothesis of a list of controls that might deter breaches when anecdotal evidence shows it's not working. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we both know this is an area of passion for me, so in terms of uh, the effectiveness of controls. And this may be the way forward. It's not that we're, no one's going to get rid of it. It's not going to wake up one day and say we're not going to PCI anymore. It's here to stay. I think the challenge is let's evolve it, take steps forward, and try to, to make it less brittle, uh, more um, enlightened. Yeah. And some of your lang language here might be a way forward. So uh, if you could wave a magic wand, uh, and uh, you got to uh, you know, wave it at the, uh, say, the PCI Security Standards Council. But uh, what would that magic wand do? Well, there are options. And uh, you know, one of the things I said is lead, follow, or get out of the way. Um, if their intended scope is narrow and their enforcement will be narrow, then they should be very, very clear what they are and what they aren't. And, and not ever allow anyone to conflate it as an industry best practice. It's something just north of negligence. It's a minimum due care. Um, if they want to leverage the power, so with great power comes great responsibility is one of my points. They have a lot of power, so they can rise to that and become uh, more uh, adaptive to the changes in the current landscape, changes in technology, et cetera. Or if they really aren't up for that task and they really just want to secure card data, then their messaging, their posturing, and their, their uh, all right, so you have the magic wand, right? Uh, they choose to lead. What would leading look like? It, it would dramatically expand the scope, and I'm not necessarily sure that's a good thing. I, I think they really just need to make sure that they're always speaking with clarity and accuracy about the role they play and should play in someone's overall risk posture. I think in an effort to defend the honor or the intent of the, the standard, they have perpetuated the misconception that they're an industry-wide best practice for all security. I just want uh, very clear communication from them about what they are and what they aren't. And if they do want to keep pace with technology and threat changes, then you know we're going to have to work as a community and they'll have to be open to input and more agile than they have been. If they can't do that or shouldn't do that, then they need to withdraw. They need to wield the power or yield the power. And it's probably going to be a mixture of both. Sounds good. Well, uh, I think uh, we can look forward to continuing this discussion. I hope so. Uh, I think there are a couple of uh, things that uh, we promised to discuss further, and I'm looking forward to that. Great, thank you. Hey, Josh, thank you.